Hi, I'm Jimmy. In this video, we're looking at Amazon stock, ticker symbol AMZN. So the goal of this video is to look quickly at Amazon's business, then we're going to look at some recent developments, specifically some headwinds that the company appears to be facing, and then finally we're going to try to come up with a fair value for Amazon stock using discount of free cash flow. Now, before we jump into our Amazon analysis, I just want to tell you about a website that we're almost done building. We've been saying it'll be ready by the end of June. We are now in June and it should be done any week now. But basically the point of this website, the early phases of the website is you can punch in the ticker symbol of the company that you're interested in. The website will then pull down estimates for free cash flow from analysts. So it'll automatically pull down analyst estimates for free cash flow. It'll calculate the fair value of the stock using discount of free cash flow. For me, I'm using a required rate of return of 7.5%, but of course you can customize that to use whatever you want, or you can use the company's own weighted average cost of capital. The goal of this website is to make it quick and easy to come up with a fair value for stocks, to see which stocks we should do a deeper dive on, and then if it's a stock that you like and you do the research, this website is there to help you come up with where you should buy it. At what point should you consider investing in the stock below what price? So if you'd like to sign up for this website, the advantage to signing up before the website goes live, which should be, again, be any week now, but the advantage to signing up before it goes live is we are locking in the price indefinitely. So the price will never go up on you if you sign up before the website goes live. So again, a link in the description below. Okay, now we're gonna jump back to our Amazon analysis and we're gonna kick it off with Amazon's business segments. So their largest segment is clearly their online stores business. This is exactly what it sounds like, amazon.com, their online store business. Related to that is their third-party seller services, which if you are a retailer, if you sell products, you can sell products on Amazon and they get a cut of that. That is where that revenue comes from. By the way, this revenue is, this breakdown of percentages is based on the most recent completed year, which is 2021. Okay, then we have AWS. AWS is short for Amazon Web Services. That accounts for about 13% of their overall revenue. Now, this is an important segment because one, this is their fastest growing segment, but also it's the segment that generates the highest margins for them. So in time, this segment's going to get more and more important. I just want to bring that up. Okay, then we have subscription services, which, is account, which accounts for about 7% of their total revenue. After that is their advertising services business. And this is where those third-party sellers that I mentioned before People can advertise on the website, and of course, Amazon is able to generate some revenue from that. Finally, we have their physical stores. Now, of course, their physical stores aren't nearly as prevalent as their online business, but it is a growing part of their business, so I would expect to see this revenue ramp up in coming years as well. Okay, so now let's jump over to some recent developments. So, one of the biggest recent, I think this is one of the most important recent developments for Amazon's business, is their current excess capacity. When we look at this chart here, well, this is a chart of their total square footage, the total square footage that Amazon controls, ultimately in their distribution network. And we can see that in the past two years, specifically from 2019 to 2021, mostly due to COVID and the excitement around COVID, well, the issues with COVID and the limited capacity that they had, well, Amazon really ramped up their total capacity. The problem with that is that they ultimately went too far with it. They built too much capacity to the point that they ended up with excess capacity. So one of the problems with this is this, this leads to lower profit margins when we look at their, you know, the excess capacity. They have to pay for square footage that one, they don't need and they're not using right now. Now, this is, a, I believe, a short-term problem because they will, the company is growing quick enough that they will grow into that capacity. But in the near term, this is affecting their overall numbers. In fact, if we look at some quarterly numbers for this is their, their net profit margins, what percentage of revenue is turned into profit? Well, we can see in the past few quarters, these past three quarters here, profit is down. Part of the reason for that is because they were building excess capacity and they have to cover the cost for that capacity. But over the long run, I do expect for them to gradually grow into that. So where this is a net, a net negative now, over the next couple of years, a lot of that should shake itself out. And I would expect for them to continue their, their improving profit margins, which it was clearly doing before this whole downtick happened. That being said, another development out of the most recent earnings report is the loss, the write down that they took in their Rivian investment. 
So Amazon owns a piece of Rivian, which is a publicly traded electric vehicle company. And the issue with that is that as the stock, Rivian stock moves up and down, they take basically gains and losses based on how that stock moves. Not the most recent quarter, but the quarter before that, they had a huge gain because the stock was up. This most recent quarter, the stock pulled back, so they get a huge write down. But this is a big deal because if you look at their their on the books earnings, their US GAAP earnings, earnings per share was negative $7.56. But if you were to remove the Rivian investment, if you were to make the necessary adjustments, as we should do any time we're analyzing a company, we should remove these non-operational investments, uh, new, these non-operational expenses. And what we do is when we remove that, well, we end up with a positive earnings per share of $4.24. That could easily be converted over into net income. Net income is just net income. I mean, earnings per share is just net income divided by the shares outstanding. And when we look at this chart, of their net income going back to 2007, what we can see in the past few years, again, these are this is an adjusted chart. So we've excluded the Rivian investments, both on the positive side and on the negative side, and any other one-time write-offs or write-ups or write-downs that they might have. Ignoring that, we can see that their profit has really ramped up nicely in recent years. These are annual numbers. Okay, that being said, let's look over at Amazon's revenue, which really shows how quickly Amazon's revenue has been growing. But one concern about their revenue is that revenue, although it is growing, big jump in 2022, it is expected that revenue growth will gradually decline. So it won't, it'll still grow, just not as fast. Okay, now before we jump over to the fair, our fair value calculation for Amazon stock, let's look quickly at their shares outstanding. So this is a chart of Amazon's shares outstanding, once again, going back to 2007. So the first thing we may notice is that shares outstanding over the past two decades or so, 15 years, 15, 20 years, whatever it is, have gradually drifted higher. Now, Amazon does have a buyback program and they have done some stock buybacks, but Amazon also has many of their employees, management, people that work in the company get stock options. Oftentimes those stock options add to the shares outstanding, which is why we would gradually see an increase in the number of shares outstanding that they have. So this is something for us to keep in the back of our mind, although I'm not sure it totally sways whether or not we would invest in the stock, but it's not like they're out there raising money because they need excess capital. They have the money, they're just paying out some of their employees, mostly in stock options. Okay, now let's switch over to our fair value calculation for Amazon stock using discount of free cash flow. So the interesting part about Amazon right now is Amazon's about to go through a 20 for one stock split. So we're filming this video on Friday, Friday, the day though, Friday before the stock split, which happens on Monday. Right now, Amazon stock midday is about 2,400 bucks per share. So to account for the fact that there's going to be a stock split, basically what we would do is we would take the most recent stock price divided by, in this case, divided by 20, since it's a 20 for one stock split. But we would also have to multiply the shares outstanding by 20. That's pretty much the only adjustments that need to be made because the fair value of the stock shouldn't change just because there's a stock split. Stock, uh, stock split doesn't create any value. It just shifts the way it is. For example, imagine you had a pizza pie and that pizza pie, instead of being cut into eight slices, it was cut into 10 or 15 or 20 or 30. Well, you're not creating any new food. You're just changing how big each slice is. All this 20 for one stock split is doing is divvying up the value of the company into more individual, smaller pieces. So what we've done is we've, we've adjusted this calculation to account for the post stock split. So if you're watching this video, anytime after the stock split has happened, this is the fair value calculation we're getting. Proportionally, same as what it was before we did the adjustment. But right now we have the fair value, the current stock price at about $121 per share. The fair value is up at about $113 per share. So it looks like as of right now, Amazon stock appears to be slightly overvalued. Now, what this calculation does is it takes analyst estimates for free cash flow, and we calculated additional years. So we went on a total of 10 additional years. We had the computer calculate a 10 additional years. And during those 10 additional years, we gradually decreased how fast Amazon stock was growing. We actually elected to do a 13% growth rate, 
which is when we look at the revenue growth in recent years, well, it's on the more conservative side. One of the reasons I want to be more conservative here is that in recent years, Amazon's free cash flow hasn't been terribly consistent. Now, as they get larger and they are able to generate more free cash flow, I would expect their free cash flow to get more consistent, but I wanted to take a slightly more conservative approach. And using this conservative approach, again, the stock looks slightly overvalued. So for me, I like Amazon's business. I like what they're doing. I think they're going to grow into their capacity. And over the long run, I think Amazon's business will do very well. I'd like to see personally for this stock to drop from about the 121 level down to closer to $100 per share. That would give me a bit of margin of safety below my 113 fair value calculation. So if we can get Amazon stock to drop near 100, I'd be much more inclined to jump in and buy that. So in the meantime, what I'm going to be doing is, although I'm not going to buy Amazon stock, I am go going to add Amazon stock to my bullpen. That way I can watch it. And if the stock gets to a good price, I will happily jump in and buy some of that. With that being said, if you'd like to sign up to get access to this website, I will leave a link right here. I'll leave a link in the description below. And thank you so much for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.